Good morning, Bucknutters. It's Thursday, March 19th, 2015. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. We are joined by the lovely and talented Steve Wiltfong, as we always are on Thursdays, 24-7 Sports Director of Recruiting. Steve, how are you this fine NCAA tournament morning? Daniel, it's a very exciting day. This is a day where before I had kid and before uh, I, I added responsibility at 24-7 Sports, I'd be cruising up the highway on my way up to hang out with my buddies, sports TVs, all weekend, we got the thing catered. There's cigars. There's all kinds of good gambling going on, uh, good poker games in the background. It's a complete man room for four days, uh, and I'm missing that this year. I'm staying. I'm home. Uh, I got a nice setup at the house, but nothing like that. But it'll be uh, – I'm doing the Bucknuts morning five. Then I'm sneaking out to get a workout in, and I'm going to try not to do much work the rest of the day like most of America. Right, exactly. At least you don't have to call in sick. That's actually kind of the, you know, unfortunately with this job, you work from home. That, no doubt. Not as it's pluses and minuses, but on a day like this, it's a minus because, yeah, if you work in an office, you call in sick, you stay home, you watch ball, uh, nothing can happen. But for me, if Brendan Ferns commits to Ohio State, I'm writing that story. You know what I mean? So that means recruiting doesn't stop. It's 365 days a year, and, of course, every Thursday we like to get a little update from Steve. There is a name and several names that we've talked about lately on the site. One we haven't talked about here in a while that I think most Bucknutters assume will be part of the class of 2016 is Ben Ferns. What's the latest? Well, the St. Clairsville top 100 linebacker, the number one inside linebacker in the country, according to 24-7 Sports, visited West Virginia this weekend. I talked to his dad a couple times this week. Brendan's got over 30 offers from powerhouse programs across the country. In the, Back around the time of Friday Night Lights, um, back in June and July, there was the, there was talk about Brendan committing to Ohio State within the family and, and how much they really liked Chris Ashton. Had Coach, Coach Ash been around for Michael's recruitment, uh, Michael would have went to Ohio State instead of, of Michigan, perhaps, and, and obviously now he's transferred to West Virginia. But the family really built a great uh, relationship with, with Chris Ash. That was one of their better relationships, along with Jerry Montgomery, who was at Michigan, uh, who's now, who, who then went on to Oklahoma, uh, who now, I believe, is with the Green Bay Packers. But and Brent Pry from Penn State and I know Mike Ferns is loving it at West Virginia now, according to his dad, and, and uh, so that that's certainly a positive in West Virginia's uh, favor right now. But here's the thing. Just because a, a guy is a lean to one school at one point doesn't mean things can change. Now, I'm not, I'm not ready to put my crystal ball away from Ohio State. I haven't heard anything to make me believe, or I haven't heard anything yet that says Brendan Ferns is going somewhere other than Ohio State. So my crystal ball is still – on Ohio State, but he hasn't decided. And he's and not only the next step for Brendan Ferns is he's going to narrow his list, not decide. So there's still a process going on here, and they're still talking to schools, and, and they're going to make more visits and, and see what else is out there. And uh, so uh, although there was a lot of reasons to think Brendan Ferns was going to be a Buckeye at the summer, and, and I still think that there's a good shot that he could be a Buckeye, uh, you know, who who knows what's going to happen. Same thing with Austin Mack. I mean, Austin Mack's a guy that I've been counting in the Ohio State class for a long time. And I find out uh, recently, and Austin Mack still favors Ohio State, but people are, are giving him things to think about within his own circle of trust uh, to say, hey, maybe Michigan would be a better fit or maybe Notre Dame would be a better fit. And then he's going and visiting Michigan. He visits Michigan last weekend visiting Notre Dame this weekend. Again, uh, my crystal ball still says Ohio State, and I haven't heard anything to make me believe that Austin's not going to go to Ohio State. But things can change on a dime, uh, and uh, so we'll see what happens with both of these young men. But right now, I I think they'll both be Buckeyes. Yeah, Austin Mack, of course, the standout receiver out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. One recruitment that we expect to wrap up much sooner than that, and we want to get as much as we can of it on the BM5 here before it ends. Liam Eichenberg, the latest. Well, I just think that both finalists think they have a shot to land Liam Eichenberg, the five-star offensive tackle from Cleveland St. Ignatius. When you're talking Ohio State and Notre Dame, both sides, 
uh, feel like they they could sign this young man, and he's going to visit both places one more time in April and make a decision. And my crystal ball says Ohio State, but I, I could see it going either way with with Liam. He's a he's kind of a different kind of cat when you when you talk about uh, some offensive lines, and he he's a little more vocal on Twitter than the average offensive lineman, and and uh, uh, so it's tough to get kind of a, a read or a pulse on him. You know, talking to people around him for the last couple months, it, it seemed like going back to uh, the Army Bowl in December, it seemed like Ohio State had emerged uh, as a team to beat. But in the last couple weeks or so, uh, I'm getting more of a foggy feel on this. And, and so we'll see what these uh, next couple visits do. Again, until I hear differently, my crystal ball is on Ohio State for, for Liam Eikenberg. That's good, good news. And now the one prediction everyone tuned in for, Steve Wiltfong's Final Four. I don't know if other people, when they get done filling out their bracket, they're like, how the hell did I get to this? And I'm one of those guys. And and I'm I'm in it to win it, so I'm boom or bust. So I got some – my bracket's always crazy. I've won once, and then I typically finish near the bottom in, in all the other ones. Uh, but my Final Four – is Kentucky, Arizona, Virginia, and UCLA. My Elite Eight's Kentucky, UCLA. Texas. UCLA. Yes, yes. Uh, my my Elite Eight's Kentucky, Texas, Wisconsin, Arizona, Wyoming, Virginia, Duke, and UCLA. Um, who else do I got? In the Sweet 16, NC State's in there for me. Texas versus Indiana. Uh, yeah, so... Um, I, maybe I didn't go as boomer bust as I think, but I do got some, you know, I got Wyoming in the Elite Eight and UCLA in the Final Four. Uh, I doubt too many people got that going on. Uh, so hopefully that's my win, that's my winning pick. Hopefully, hopefully I win the couple hundred dollars. I'm all in for a couple hundred dollars, man. Ladies and gentlemen, hustle over to the internet, take that advice and win yourself some money. Steve, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Thursday. Wyoming, guys. Wyoming, baby. We'll see you. UCLA, too. Don't forget.